Okay, so this is the schematic for the flash circuit found within a disposable camera. And from first glance, you can tell that this circuit is actually rather complex, at least from the perspective of somebody with a basic understanding of electronics. At second glance, you might see that our individual components do not have measurements assigned with them. So we don't know um, what the values are for our resistors and capacitors and what have you. But this is not important for the purposes of this video and the project in general. Uh, just knowing that all these components have the proper measurements to function together uh, is basically all you really need to know. Now before I get into the thick of it and explain how the entire circuit works, I'll quickly go over the individual components and their functions so that we have an understanding of what's going on and that will hopefully make the later summary more uh, easy to understand. So for starters we have this transistor right here and this transistor acts like a switch within this side of the circuit. And what this is going to do is allow current to flow from our power supply up here down to ground, which will activate our transformer, which we'll talk about later. But basically, this transformer will be turned on once our switch is closed and a small voltage is applied to this side. Once that happens, current can flow through this end and out this end and like I said, that will bring current down from the power supply. Next we have our transformers which are used to up the voltage within the individual sections of our circuit. And this is a very necessary thing to have because if you try to fire a flash tube using just the 1.5 volt power supply, you wouldn't get much light or any light at all due to inefficiencies and inconsistencies within the circuit itself. So we have to up the voltage so that we can get a powerful outpour of light from our flash tube. The way this works is by drawing current through this end of this, the transformer, which then induces a charge on this end of the transformer, but this charge will carry a much larger voltage than the other side. And that's due to what we call a turn ratio, and that's just respective of how many coils we have in this end of the transformer and how many coils we have in this end of the transformer. When you see very few coils turning into a large number of coils, that's when we'll see our voltage increasing, uh, which is the case for both of our transformers. As we move on, we'll look at these two diodes. One is serving more or less like a converter within our circuit, and the other one is light emitting and is used as an indicator to tell the user when the flash is ready to be used. We also have our flash tube which you can think of as just a regular light and that will be activated at the very end of the process. And other than that we just have our resistors which are used to basically section off the different components within the circuit and what's left is our two switches which are basic contact switches and those are just used to allow current to flow in the different parts of the circuit. Now with that in mind we'll start to look at how all of this works together. On this first portion which is a basic oscillator we have our transformer, our diode, 
our first switch and our transistor with this resistor up here. And what this is going to do is create that large voltage we want to be used in the flash tube. And that's done by first turning on the transistor, which will be done by connecting this switch and drawing current down from our power supply. Once that end of the transistor is activated, current will flow down from our power supply to ground through the other end of the transistor. And what this does is induces a charge on the other end of the transformer, but of a much higher voltage. Now the way this works on the two ends will create AC current, which is not compatible with the other side of the circuit. So once that current is created, we have to convert it down to DC current, which is done so with the use of this diode. Once we get beyond this point in the circuit, the large voltage created in this transformer will be drawn down and stored in this capacitor. This capacitor will keep on charging until it is full, at which point current will then flow through this resistor into this light emitting diode, turning on the diode and telling the user that the flash is ready to be released. Once we get beyond that point, we have a backup capacitor right here, which is used to store excess current, which may build up, and we want to store that so that our flash is not discharged prematurely. After this capacitor we have this smaller transformer and our trigger. Now the trigger as it's remained open will not allow current to flow through this end of the transformer. However once the user closes this trigger and current flows through that end of the transformer we will induce a current on the other end which will then flow up to the flash tube. Now that's important because the charge that we have in the capacitor down here is not large enough to activate the flash tube right from the get-go. So we have to activate the flash tube with the charge we get from this end of the transformer. Once that happens and the flash tube is activated all the energy from this capacitor will flow up to the flash tube, be drawn across the flash tube, and it will come out in the form of light. And after all is said and done, these capacitors will be discharged, these switches will be open once more, and the process will begin once this switch is closed and our currents start to flow into the different components of the circuit. So hopefully after that brief explanation of what's going on, you understand how the circuit actually works and that it's not so simple or as simple as you may have thought beforehand.